One thing that catches your attention when you visit Borno State is the huge construction sites around the city. From security to education, healthcare delivery and so on. Infrastructural development has been rapid in recent times as well as human capacity building. Welcome to Borno Restoration. I'm Jesse Tafida. But first, let's bring you Borno Today. Signed on the 10th of January 2022, the budget 269.9 billion Naira is focused on sustaining the gains of the 25-year development effort of ministries, departments and agencies. The State Ministry of Finance, Budget and Economic Planning gives a breakdown of how the budget will be spent by each ministry. The Commissioner Adam Lowen noted that the budget, if implemented with courage and dedication, could reduce poverty and unemployment and raise people's living conditions. The policy direction of this administration is to ensure effective and efficient delivery of the State Developmental Plan and the 2022 budget. The primary objective of revitalizing the economy, restoring the dignity of labor, rekindling hope, and strengthening resilience, most of our returnees informed the decision to name the 2022 budget as Budget of Hope for Force Conflict Stability. Adam Ullawan discloses that the state government is planning to release the sum of 770 million naira for the payment of one year leave grants arrears of civil servants. Continue to embrace good governance through a robust and responsive public service built on principle of accountability, transparency, equity and justice in resource utilization and service delivery. To enhance the agricultural sector, forestall food security and reduce dependency on food aids. The state internal generated revenue will be initiated through blocking of leakages liabilities of federal civil servants and other liabilities owned by the federal government as well as pay as you earn of international non-governmental organizations with head offices and states. The finance ministry also reveals that the state government has been prompt in payment of salaries, allowances and gratuities for civil servants regularly despite the challenges. These four suspects were arrested by men of the Borno State Police Command following a viral video posted on social media of their engagement of a fiscal assault. The video shot miscreants suspected to be political thugs hitting a lady and threatening to kill her if she continues attacking Honorable Satomi, a federal lawmaker, on her Facebook wall. And the Nigerian Police Force, Borno Command, in our usual way, we swiftly move into action and the following suspects were arrested in connection with the offence. They will be thoroughly investigated and prosecuted. This is an assurance from me. We are not going to relent. But no command is a relatively gaining peace. We will not allow Ms. Grant to continue uh, molesting uh, people uh, going about gender violence. Human rights activists express their displeasure over the incident and insist that justice should be served. There is a lot of perpetration of violation of the, the right of women in Borno State. And I think this is going to be a kind of a deterrent. I'm very happy that the police itself and all the media people are proactive about it because this is 2022. We are approaching the 2023 where we are, we're going to have a kind of general election. By this time, if we don't curtail some of the excesses of these uh, talks and what have you, I think we, all of us will, will not have a conducive situation, I mean, environment where we are going to cast out our vote. Uh, but the member representing Jerry sure. Federal constituency at the Green Chamber, Honorable Ahmed Satomi, exonerated himself from the incident. The news came to me as a shock and barely disheartening looking at my antecedents that I have zero uh, tolerance 
to tolerance to gender-based violence. So therefore, I totally condemn it with total voice and I applaud the security apparatus. And definitely, I will also be part and parcel to ensure that justice has been achieved to her. In the same vein, concerned Jerry Progressive Group conveyed their discontent over the incident and insist that the culprits face full wrath of the law. Burma State has been in the spotlight of rapid development in recent times. The state has continued to pride itself as an example of social economic prosperity in northeast Nigeria. Having suffered setbacks from over a decade long Boko Haram insurgency, Borno State is fast repositioning itself as one of the most promising states in Nigeria. Many have attributed the success story to forward thinking leadership provided by the state governors in the last decade. Under Professor Baba Genazulu, the state has witnessed all-round infrastructure development and human capacity building. From security, education, health care delivery, resettlement to poverty alleviation, the governor has rekindled the hope of the people through its 10 packed developmental agenda and restoration mission. In the face of adversity, Governor Zulum has continued to lead from the front with enormous support for the military, civilian JTF, vigilante group and local hunters who have played critical roles in the relative peace being experienced in Borno State. Areas under cultivation have increased by about 400 percent. People have started going back to their farmlands. I'm not saying that uh, the security situation is over completely, but substantial progress has been made in ensuring the safety of farmers in their farmlands, and we are doing well. But the insurgence is not over. We are battling with them, and then, but uh, their minions have been reduced, we are looking forward to see how we can completely degrade them. You know, such, such dimensions of insurgency will take a longer period before somebody will say that the insurgents are completely eliminated. But I think the federal government has done well. The, the military, the paramilitary and the civilian JTF and the community have done well. Peace has gradually started returning home. Professor Baba Ganazalim has been consolidating on the gains of the previous administration in the education sector with construction of mega schools across the state. Many of the people in local communities no longer need to travel long distance to have access to basic and quality education. He advanced the philosophy of education in the state through creation of technical and vocational institutes across three senatorial districts of the state. The Vocational Institute in Munah is training about 1,500 youths in different skills. We have uh, vehicle units. In vehicle units, we have three units. We have the panel beating sites, we have the motor vehicles and mechanics, we have the automotive mechatronics unit. The purpose of this automotive mechatronics is most of our modern vehicles now are, are advanced, or I can say a digital advanced 
uh, or hybrid cars. So whenever they find they have problem for you to diagnose and repair the fault, you have to use a kind of devices, a computer devices that can uh, detect the fault and then we immediately arrest the situation. So, and if you can, uh, from the other units in uh, uh, the vehicle units, we have panel beating. So we, it's not that uh, it's not the ordinary panel beating that you know the Rosa panel beating. We have our oval. So we have our expert on ground that we want to take care of that oval. The health sector also bears the stamp of Governor Zulim's visionary leadership. Apart from upgrading the state specialist hospitals, more primary health care centers have been built across the state, especially for those in the suburb. More than 50 primary health care facilities were built from the scratch. I want to appreciate this particular effort of building primary health care by the state government, His Excellency Professor Babagana Omar Azulu. Uh, this community, as we see, people have been worried for events that was happening within this atmosphere. This atmosphere where you find the young girls and boys are having a very unscrupulous lifestyle. This is an area that became a disturbance to the community before now. This is an area where you find drunkards, uh, drug addicts, and uh, futureless young people who come around to waste time here. But now, with the advance of this particular governor, that is Professor Babagana Omar Zulum, uh, this place has been condemned and changed to be a vital an important atmosphere for the community. You see, it's a primary health care where the people of this community are receiving immediate attention. His greatest passion is to close most of the IDP camps and resettle displaced people back to their ancestral homes. So far, about 5,000 households have been resettled in new homes built by the state government. Major communities in Borno State have become huge construction sites. Massive road construction and rehabilitation have also been completed. This flyover that is being constructed will solve a lot of problems in Medjugorje. We are happy with it because it will bring a lot of improvement. It is a good job. Kudos to the governor. The commencement of the repatriation process. Is no doubt that the administration of Professor Baba Kenazalim have been remarkable as the state is fast becoming the envy of orders in the Northeast region. It is a template of hope, doggedness, resilience, and optimism that there will always be light at the end of the tunnel. I had a chat with the Borno State Commissioner of Finance, Budget and Economic Planning, Adam Lowen. I began by asking him how the state has been able to sustain infrastructural development in the face of global economic crunch as a result of COVID-19 and other peculiar factors. Take a listen.
Well, thank you so much uh, for having me on this program. Um, first of all, uh, the global economic meltdown affected almost everybody. Uh, but here in Borno State, um, we were able to do more with the little resources we had. Because uh, my principal, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Borno State, is a very good manager of human and material resources. Um, he also believes uh, the, with the principle of time value of money. Uh, whatever we had at that time, we decided to buy in bulk, bulk purchases of um, especially building materials and some other items because um, because of the economic meltdown and the inflation has been on the rise. So he advised that we should we should invest all that we have on the things we need, especially in the reconstruction and rehabilitation of, uh, of communities that have been destroyed by the insurgency. So with all, we decided to buy, like I said, in bulk purchases of all of our materials and then uh, work started in any since we have all the materials on ground. We started to, we decided to start the work and then for the labor costs and other overhead expenses, we were able to achieve it. So that's the massive, that's how we were able to do a lot of massive infrastructural development within the state, even though we have gotten a lot of um, assistance from the federal government and at the same time, the international uh, organizations, the NGOs and, and the INGOs in the state. Now that the state has um, signed the 2022 budget, take, talk us through what you want to achieve this year. Well, uh, the budget is the budget of uh, restoration and uh, and the hope of restoration uh, for the 2022. Actually, His Excellency is determined to relocate all the IDPs back to their ancestral homes. And in line with that, from the budget presentation we did earlier this morning, you will see that the Ministry of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement uh, has been given a chunk of the budget to do these activities. And then that is in the area of uh, returning the IDPs. In the area of health, Borussia government has sunk a lot of money, invested a huge sum of money in the area of health. Because health is an issue, looking at the over a decade long uh, ins in insurgency that we found ourselves, you see that um, a lot of health issues arose and then we have no option then to invest. In the area of education too, His Excellency has uh, massively invested so much so in providing the necessary required infrastructure for our, for the educational sector. This year, our one of our objectives or one of the aim of this budget is to see the uh, recruitment of teachers to man these schools. Training of the existing teachers is also very key. We find out that most of the teachers are not trained and over the course of their duty. So we have no option then to also train them to meet up with the challenges of the 21st century and uh, other sectors, like I said, the health sectors, as you are aware, you are, we have the state university now. The state government is building the state teaching hospital. Massive investment has been done. God's willing, before the end of this year, some of the major complexes and um, the, the theater halls will be ready for commissioning. I think this one will go a long way before the student will go into their clinical session. And then you know it is also a citizen's budget where we call on the civil societies organization, the organized labor sector, uh, everybody for them to come and give us our their input. Based on that, we are able to come up with the budget. And also, into, we are also taking into consideration our 25-year development plan and the 10-year strategic initiative which was launched and then all our budget, we are following it. We are following this 25 year development religiously. We make sure all that we plan for the next 10 years, next 25 years, we are, is in the budget and we are following it religiously. For the 2021, yes, we have almost achieved like 73%. Yes, but we want to be like at 90%, 92, 95, at most 100%, but you know, uh, a lot of things came up and then you were, were not able to do that, but hopefully this year, 22, 
God willing, we want to achieve 100% of our budget. Now, let's talk the internal generated revenue, that's the IGR. What is the state government doing to boost its own IGR? Well, um, uh, the inception of this administration, uh, our IGR used to be on the average of um, 350, 400 million monthly. Uh, but what is excellency, when he came up on board uh, in this administration, we were able to jack up this internal generated revenue from that 400 million average to over a billion naira monthly. Uh, last year, 2021, we were able to achieve 18 billion, but the cost of collection and order for the MDAs uh, uh, took about 2 point something billion, which we are left with over 16 billion. This year, our, propose, our, our proposal is for 20 billion for this year, but I hope and pray and then I am all, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we are going to even surpass this uh, 20 billion this year because of some of the measures we put in place. Now, uh, any state without a good IGR base, like I said in the morning during our, is, is a troubled state because we, 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 we shouldn't be going to Abuja every month, cap in hand, collecting the stipend the federal government is giving us. Yes, it's going a long way, but we have to. We have to improve our IGR base and we really improved. You know, because of the insurgency, I know Borno being the only state bordering three international, having three international borders, we have great potentials of competing with even states like Lagos and River State. That's, that's the, of course, in terms of IGR, because there's a lot of potentials. When you look at it, you have three international borders. No state in Nigeria has that opportunity of having three international borders, because if those borders are well secured and well I think the sky will be our limit because we, 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 the, the potential has also been harnessed, even if for, for like 10%. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one, uh, some of the things we want to do this year to actually improve our, our IGR base has to do with uh, personal income tax of our people. A lot of people here in, in Borno State are not even aware that they are supposed to pay their personal income tax. They feel you only pay tax when you do business or if you're a government worker or if you are in, in, in any private sector doing business. But people use So we have created that awareness. And I'm happy to say and also commend the good people of Borno State, even residing outside this state, they have been paying, they have been complying. They now realize that Borno needs an IGR to sustain itself because of the enormous pressure we have due to the insurgency. So uh, a lot of them are now paying. They do their self-assessment. Some of them, we help them do the assessment for them, and they are paying. This is a, it's a, it is a very good uh, thing that is happening, and I really like to commend uh, those people. I don't want to mention them here because for, <laughs> for obvious reasons, but uh, honestly, they are really, really, really trying, and we want to commend them, we want to ask them to do more and also educate them. Then the other aspect of it is um, when we came, we decided to introduce the TSA arrangement because we used to have different accounts all over the banks for the TSA but now we have we put all our collections into a single account we can monitor on our dashboard how much we are collecting on a single day every blessed day you can pay from anywhere you see it and then we also try to make sure that all those uh, leakages has been blocked we used to collect manually, people paying their rent, their, their levies, cash. We have discouraged that one. We now use the POS. We ask them to go to the bank and pay through remittance. Some people that have all the internet, they can do it even in the comfort of their offices and homes. They can now pay, then the receipt will be generated. And then we, we also make sure that all the government activities we centralize all government transactions into that single account. Most of the MDAs that used to collect levies on behalf of the government are now being controlled by the Board of Internal Revenue is the, is the, is the, is the only entity saddled with the responsibility of collecting taxes on behalf of the government. Okay, now let's talk empowerment of small-scale businesses and youths. Kindly tell us what the state government is doing in supporting small-scale businesses. Okay, last year, uh, in 2021, His Excellency approved the sum of a billion naira 
in conjunction with the Bank of Industry. Then the Bank of Industry uh, brought 500 million. We also gave 500 million and assisted all the small scale industries in terms of loan, ranging from 250,000 to 500,000, some even a million, some even two million. So, and then the second tranche was also done around November, October, November last year, where the Bank of Industry brought in 500 million. The state government we also gave 500 million. A billion naira was also shared through the Ministry of Trade and Investment. So, uh, at least a billion naira has been sent into the SME people here in, in, in Borno State. And it's going to be a continuous process. And uh, God's willing, His Excellency has also uh, agreed and in, in principle and also said that we are going to do even more this year to see that the SME, the small scale business, really pick up. We need people to pick up the pieces of their lives. If they go back to their ancestral home, we need them to do things. We need them to go back to their farms, we need them to go back to start their normal trading activities. So without the support, honestly, uh, of, the, of the government, these people will still like to come back to the city to also be or create a news. And so we want to keep them there and engage them in terms of whatever they want to do, in terms of either farming or in terms of their small uh, trade and businesses. The Commissioner Ministry for Finance, Budget and Economic Planning at the Mulawan, thank you for your time on Borno Restoration. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And that's our show on this edition of Borno Restoration. Thanks for watching. I'm Jesse Tofida. See you next time. Bye-bye.